Hello, everybody, and welcome to your linear algebra review on the inverses of elementary matrices. My name is Jason, and I work for the ASU Tutoring Centers. Now, um, it, we could find the inverses of these matrices in the traditional way, right? Remember how you find the inverse of a matrix? You take the matrix, you augment with the identity, and then you reduce row echelon form this. And then what you should end up getting is you get the identity over here. And on the right hand side, you get your inverse matrix. So this is sort of like the traditional way of, of finding inverses. Um, and we have a couple videos on that if you want to review those. Um, but we can actually find the inverses of these elementary matrices in more of a like a, a theoretical way. Let's go through like what these inverse matrices do and try to reason our way to what the inverse is. Um, so let's look at the first one, right? We're trying to find the inverse of this matrix. So first of all, what kind of inverse matrix is this? Well, this is the one that swaps rows. In particular, right, if we look at what the identity matrix looks like, because again, all elementary matrices kind of come from the identity matrix. If we look at the, the identity matrix, what's the difference between the identity and this one? Well, the first and third rows are swapped. So that's what this elementary matrix does. It swaps rows one and three. It's a terrible and. That's what this elementary matrix does. It swaps the first and third row. So then how would we inverse that? How would we invert that operation? So say I, I've gone and I've swapped my first and third row, how do I undo that? Well, the way to undo that is to swap the rows back, right? That's how you'd undo that operation. So that tells me that the inverse, the inverse matrix is actually the exact matrix that I started with, right? This undoes my, this, this matrix here, the matrix that swaps the first and third row, I undo it by swapping them back. So it's its own inverse. This matrix is its own inverse. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's move on to the second one. So what's happening here? So this is the elementary matrix that it's scalar multiplication. So it, it, it multiplies row two by negative one seventh. That's what this elementary matrix does. Okay. Or again, we, we look at the identity matrix. How, what's the difference? How do we get from the identity matrix to this matrix in part B? Well, we multiply the second row by negative one seventh. So oftentimes you can see what the elementary matrix does to other matrices by seeing how you get the elementary matrix from the identity. So this one multiplies row two by negative one seventh. So how do we undo that operation? If I took row two of, of some matrix, I multiply by negative one seventh, how do I undo that? Well, I can undo that by multiplying by negative seven, right? So if I took row two and I multiplied by negative one seventh, and then I multiplied that by negative seven, well, we'd end up having um, negative seven times negative one sevenths, which is one. So we end up getting row two back out of it. And that's what an inverse has to do, right? It has to undo the operation. So the inverse of this is to multiply row two by negative seven. So what would that elementary matrix look like? Well, it would look exactly the same except instead of negative one seventh in the middle, it would be negative seven. Okay, that's the inverse for part B. And now let's find the inverse for part C. Oops. So what operation is happening here? Well, we look at our third row. How do we get that third row? Well, we, we take, we add um, three times row one to row three. Right, this is, in, this is in column one. And remember how matrix multiplication works. Columns get multiplied by rows. Um, so, so this is going to be multiplied by my row one. And this is gonna be multiplied by my row three. And I'm going to end up adding them together. Okay, so, so what I'm doing is I'm changing row three by adding three times row one to it. So how do I undo that? Well, if I'm adding three times row one, and I want to undo that operation, maybe I should subtract three times row one, right? If I take row three 
plus three row ones, and then I subtract three row ones, these end up canceling. And I'm left with where I started with row three. So if I want to undo the operation of adding three times row ones, all I have to do is subtract three times row ones. So what would that elementary matrix look like? Well, it would look exactly the same, except instead of a three in the bottom left position, it's a negative three. So these, these are examples of the three different types of elementary matrices. And we can see what the, the three inverses look like. And that holds for all of these types. So anytime you have an elementary matrix that swaps two rows, the inverse is itself. So inverse is itself in this first case, in the case of, of elementary matrices that swap two rows. In the second case, when we scale up a, a row by some scalar, the inverse matrix is you invert that, right? So the inverse is, is you find the reciprocal of, of, of the scalar. So if I'm scaling up by, in this case, negative 1 7th, I found the reciprocal of that, which is negative 7. OK, so this is the general rule um, for inverses of elementary matrices that involve scalar multiplication. And then the last one, what did we do? Uh, all we did was we flipped the sign, right? We had the 3 in this position, and then we replaced it with negative 3. So this one, uh, the, the general rule for this type of elementary matrix is to, um, there's a couple ways you can phrase this. I'm going to say negate. Negate the scalar. Uh, so so in, that case, in that sense, like if it's a 3, you make it a negative 3. If it's a negative 87, you make it a positive 87. You just negate it. So whatever it is, you just put the opposite. So these are sort of like the general rules for inverses of particular types of elementary matrices. Those are your general rules. So know those. Know those. It'll make your life a little easier when dealing with elementary matrices. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I work for the ASU tutoring centers. Uh, if you want more information about the various tutoring services we have on all four major ASU campuses and online, please check out tutoring.asu.edu. If you specifically want more resources like this one, uh, so concept videos for your class, or um, maybe you want to see what upcoming review sessions we have for your class, uh, go ahead and check out this link down below. Uh, thank you all again and have a fantastic day.